Ah, been a while since we've come back to this one. Uh, I did the remaining 7% I hadn't done off screen. It was just me getting annoyed with treetops and like two other levels. Can't, what are you doing? Oh, that pop in. That whole level and then the texture pop in coming soon after it. So at first I'm like, what? How? Oh, okay, we can. We don't glide. We do hit the wall though for some. Okay, I'll go this way then. So why am I doing this? You may ask if you even care. Uh, I have very firm memories of all of the alternative endings of Crash Bandicoot, the original trilogy, and beyond, because I 100%ed the first bunch of Crash games, and really only stopped 100%ing them around Wrath of Cortex uh, and the PS2 era, and like I tried to do Nitro Car, but that's an unforgiving game, and just, I'm pretty certain I must have done this because it's kind of ringing a bell with the original PS1 Spyro but like you know my brain is just going file not found I cannot remember what the final level looks like or what you do in it and it turns out it's kind of cheap so we're gonna like I say that because think about the comparison between what you have to do and what you unlock in Crash games where it's like you get a whole different ending and yeah I know it's just like a five second cutscene where something slightly different changes it normally equates to quarte Cortex is getting mashed a different way than usual and yeah you know maybe Torna saved instead or something but it felt more like a hidden challenge thing, whereas, you know, like an extra percentages and shit really felt like an important thing in the Crash games. Whereas this feels super cheap. Like, like imagine you're at school and you're like, oh, I got 100% on Spyro, and then some guys go, well, I got 120%. And it turns out that what that means is he went through this easy as fuck final level and you just hadn't had chance to do it yet and it's literally chase these thieves. There's no enemies that are offensive, no boss, really hard to die unless you somehow fuck up and fall into the goop, the green Nickelodeon jelly at the bottom here. Or if you fail to get these guys, and they're not very fast, you've been chasing them for the rest of the game, getting eggs and stuff. So it's just a bit of a letdown really, and it feels really unearned to get over 100% in Spyro, which makes me a little sad. <laughs> like, you know, 105% in Crash Bandicoot, and 101% in, uh, I mean Crash Free, and 101% in Crash Team Racing is a pretty hard thing to do because you have to time trial and everything. Not impossible, obviously, but like, you know, it's actual, an actual challenge. This is just collect, collect the stuff. And like some of the levels that you have to do to collect the stuff are harder than this level, which is why it's so unearned. But um, I'm gonna talk more about the level now. There's these things, my version, the PS4 Pro version of Spyro HD. Fucked up the... <laughs> the exploding this specific tr uh, chest animation and instead it just phases out of existence after vomiting gems up like it's a Doom 3 enemy. And I was a little like, oh, is this going to affect my progress when I first saw this on one of the other levels when I was doing cleanup? Like, you know, am I getting the gems? And then I just saw it farted out the gems and just phased out of existence. And I was like, oh, oh no, is that a bug or is that what everyone experiences that as? Because I remember them exploding. Oh, you and your plane. 
No one's impressed. I already fly. Oh, fuck. Badly. Literally, the this is just go here. I kind of remembered it to be like this. It's basically a big room. And you just shoot down these thieves. You get the thing, you go to a door. Door unlocks more treasure and it's like zero challenge, but like I if I don't have if I only had remnants of this installed in my deep nostalgia memory. He's just floating in the air waiting for me there, just as planes are known to do. I'm just gonna check that I am where I think I am, and I yeah, I guess I am, it's okay. Ah. Uh, if this, you know, entire memory was missing, you can imagine Spyro 2, the ending, completely erased from my mind. So we'll look at that later too. And I didn't even finish Spyro 3 as a young child. And I just kind of did the bare minimum clear every time because I have no love for that game. And I've talked about that in the past, I think. It's just, it means nothing to me because it's just a zero nostalgia for me and I was never that hardcore of a Spyro fan. And in my household, the attitude back then was you fully complete a game and then you can do the next game. Like, we fully completed Crash 1 and by the time we did that, Crash 3 was out so we got Crash 3. And then once we 100% Crash 3, which is much easier than one to do, we then went back and did two and completed that too. And the attitude was to get the most value out of these games which we thought of as expensive back then. Oh yeah, I got one. Okay, this is just one ten, like it's gotta be more than that. Yeah, you show me sparks. That really helps you out, by the way. Clicking in the left stick, sparks will point at the nearest treasure that you've missed. And in some of these games, I'm like missing one gem, one red gem, and it really helped me out for like finishing this. And it will no doubt help me in three and two and whatever. So here we're just setting off fireworks to blow these up. Like it's a Katy Perry video. Humor! Sorry, I'm kind of like... This isn't really content, is it? Like, look, look, this is barely gameplay. I'm just flying from one platform to the other with no challenge. Lighting fireworks. Oh look, there's the other one. So hard. Oh, big challenge. Much wow. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to work out where I go next because there's a load more that I need to get. That's the home portal sparks, we don't want to go there. Oh you mean here. When you're flying he won't pick up the gems, you have to land. Oh, what have we got here? Ah, <laughs> oh, I see, the bullshit. Look at this unearned crap. <laughs> Uh, at least there's motivational posters. There's nothing between you except a purple dragon. Between you and success. So yeah, they're kind of fun. I'm glad they added those. Like I said, they might have been in the base game. I have no memory. <laughs> uh, yeah. But like I said, it feels like the most cheap bullshit. And like I frame it as if I was a child, right? And some guy goes, yeah, I got 120% on it. It's like, well done, you flew around a room. Like, you know, 120% in any other platform would be like a huge deal. But here it's just, oh. But are you ready? We're going to see the secret ending. Spoiler. 
So 90s. The dragon. You've defeated Ganasty Ganor, collected the dragon eggs, saved all the dragons, and recovered every bit of treasure in the Dragon Kingdom. How do you feel? I feel fired up, Bob. And I'm happy for the dragon world, of course. I certainly wouldn't want to spend the rest of my dragon days butting heads with Nasty Nork and his weird minions. What's a minion? Uh, <laughs> never mind. You know what they say. For every good battle, you need a good adversary. And I felt that Nasty, in spite of his misguided nature, was a worthy opponent. Uh-oh. Here we go again. So 90s, isn't it? Like, the whole interview, the sunglasses, and the here we go again. Mm. <laughs> Oh man, and it's weird because then they change the whole collector font and theme in the second one, so it's not even like you do the dragon thing again. But there you go, that's the end of that one.